I'm starting, starting. Okay. Expand the video. Boom. Okay, we are now live. It's, it's live on my other page. All right, how y'all doing? Praise God. We ready? I'm sorry about that. Okay. So should I go ahead and pray then, Pastor? Or Say it again. Should we go ahead and pray it in? I'm, I guess I need to talk louder. Should, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, just open up in prayer. Okay, all right. Can everybody hear me? Because this mic, this phone yeah. is not that great, yeah. to be honest. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We got everybody on line. Uh, well, Father, I just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for this word that's about to come forth. I thank you, Lord, that it be edifying, building, and guiding those who are online and those who may see this later on, that they be edified, built up in the knowledge of you, in the truth of you, and becoming closer in a relationship with you. So I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for Pastor Patterson for allowing me to do this through his church and through his ministry and through Freedom Bible Fellowship Church and all those who are joining together with us right now. I thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I just want to, again, I just want to thank everybody for being here, and I want to thank, you know, again, Pastor Patterson for allowing me to, to do this with y'all. Amen? Because nothing is a coincidence, and you let me know if I'm not talking loud enough for you. Um, but I had something on my heart that I would like to talk about, and it's been on my heart for a while because, as you know, Deacon Norman knows and, and, and Pastor knows that I do a lot of traveling, at one point, and I just recently came back from the Philippines, and, I, and I've been noticing a lot of things, especially social media is really messing up the gospel in my point of view. You know, I've been on here since its conception, when people used to tell me, why are you on that, that's the devil's workshop, and then when COVID hit, everybody got on it, you know what I mean? So, but, but my main thing is that when you're dealing with these other people in these other countries, I started recognizing that there's a, a, a Christianity out there that people are trusting more in that prophet, they're trusting more in that in that false teacher, and he's telling them they can just live any old kind of way they want, but name, claim, and decree it, and God will give it to you. Because there's no consequences for what you do. You follow, just go ahead and pray it. No confess, no forgive, no love. It's a me too generation. Amen? This is where we're at. But we have to understand the truth in God's word. So if you will go with me to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, and let me grab my glass because I, I really can't see that well right now. But Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 5. And it says, And when thou pray, Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily, which means truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father which is in, in secret, and thy Father which is seen in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But you, but, but I mean, excuse me, verse 8, my eyes again, Verse 8, be not you therefore like unto them, for your father know what your things you need have need of before you ask. Now, let me read that again. Be not you therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. So my message tonight is, he knows what you need before you ask. And the word ask there means pray. Amen? He knows what you need before you pray. He knows it. He done seen you in the low corners. He done seen you in the dark. He done seen everything you've done. 
So he already know what you need before you ask. I go places that only ask for clean water. I go places David got bumpy roads and all they're looking for is a nice road. Just a piece of, but these countries have been taught by some of us that no matter what, just ask them. They don't even unify together. You go to some of these places, they say we got churches on every corner. But when you go to these countries, they got just as many churches as we do, but they're not unified. They think they have to dress like an American. They think they have to dress like we do. They think they have to preach like we do. They think they have to do everything like we do to gain it. But that's when I recognize they are about self-gain and not the community. Amen? Amen? Pastor Patterson is about the community. No, he ain't got a million people, and I don't even think he wants a million people. Most of the churches that are doing the will and sovereign will of God are doing it secretly, they're doing it properly, but they're going to get the greatest reward they ever, ever wanted. I don't promote myself. I don't do those kind of things to run out there for self-gain. And I'm not saying some places shouldn't have it, but I'm saying what's the motive behind it? Let's go to um, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. He already knows what you need before you even ask. Jeremiah chapter 29, and we're going to be looking at verse, start at verse 11. Jeremiah 29, starting at verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. In other words, God's going to listen to you. And you shall seek me, and find me, and when you shall search for me with all your heart. This is the heart walk. He already knows what you need before you ask. He's checking your heart. Amen? And here's the biggest thing. I have learned over the years... I don't spend a whole lot of time talking to God when I'm praying, asking, begging. Because you can get to a point where, you, where you're begging God, especially this name claiming decrease stuff. You can get to a point where you're begging God so much or asking God so much to it becomes a begging process. And God don't want you begging. He can't stand begging. Amen? You have to get to the point of saying, okay, God, give me this, give me that, give me this. And then the next time you pray, God, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Even if it takes five years, ten years. But thank you, Lord, because I'm trusting in you. But when you're begging, you're telling God, I don't trust you. When you're begging other countries, you're telling God, I don't trust you. When you're begging other countries, you're telling God, I don't trust you for what I asked you for. And for what you already purposed in my life. Amen. I'm going against your sovereign will, God. I'm going over you by naming, claiming, and decreeing it because I don't believe you're going to show up. Take it from a man who knows God will show up. I done seen him do so many miracles in my life concerning drugs, alcohol, fornication, uh, uh, adultery, all kinds of things. And I used to say, how can this man, how can this God love me through this? Because he already knows the expected end. Oh, y'all not here. Oh, my goodness. He already knew the expected end of my life, just like he knows the expected end of yours. So what do I need to do a lot of times in prayer, I have learned? Is listen. We talk so much until we forget to, to stay down there and listen for the answer. You know? Getting, but we're not listening for his answer. That answer could be, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people saying that answer could be no, yes, or maybe. Well, I haven't heard him say things outside of no, yes, or maybe. See, my father in relationship rebukes me. He chastens you. He scourges you. Amen. And he disciplines you. And sometimes that ain't a yes, no, no. No, your tail is doing X, Y, Z, and you need to stop it. No, you're not acting this way. And you need to stop it. Oh, you asking me for this? Then you need to straighten X, Y, Z out before I give it to you. It's a relationship. He's not a Santa Claus or an Easter Bunny or, or a genie in a bottle. He's our father. He's our father. And he knows what we need before we even ask him. Amen. Go to Mark 11. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over cold. So God had to show me 
certain recipes in the Word of God that we should be doing as believers to get His sovereign will in our life. Because I found a lot of people don't know how to seek His sovereign will. They don't even know the scriptures or about how to seek His sovereign will. So I'm going to give you a few of them here. Go to Mark 11 where Jesus was talking. Mark 11. I hope I'm helping somebody. And can y'all still hear me? Because I'm, I'm trying to talk as loud as I can. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pop. Look at that. That's the first time I called Pastor Patterson Pop. Ain't that something? Thank you, Pop. <laughs> Amen. But um, Mark 11, starting at verse 22, if you're with me. Uh, and Jesus answering uh, said unto them, have faith in God. Now, if you got a Bible, you should write it. You should underline these things. Have faith in God. Amen? That means you need to trust in God. For verily or truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, underline doubt, or shall not doubt in his heart, underline doubt in his heart, but shall believe, underline believe, that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Now, when you see the word therefore, that means concerning everything you just read. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, that word desire in the Greek means pray. Amen? What you, therefore, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe, under I believe, that you shall receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, underline forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you. Now, <coughs> what I notice in this, it is four points that God is looking at here that we need to have a condition before we even pray to him. What is number one? First of all, we got to have faith in God in verse 22. You got to have faith before you even pray. You got to have it. Amen? Then the next thing he tells us to do is we cannot doubt it. We can't go into prayer with doubt. You got to go in there knowing it's his sovereign will and he's going to give it to us. So no doubting. Got to have faith. You can't be doubting. Second thing he tells us to do, you better believe it. Why pray and don't believe what you're praying for? Don't make sense. Then the next thing he tells us to do is what? The next thing he tells us to do, you got to desire it, believe it, and watch this. you got to forgive. You can't go into prayer without forgiving. And i got to add this part to it. You can't even go in there without confessing your mess too before you pray. Amen? <coughs> Why not? Because he don't hear you. He won't hear you. Just like we read in Matthew, it's repetitious. It's just what you're making. You're doing it for the uh, uh, glory of man, but not the glory of God. So that people will hear you pray, all oh, auspicious God, we come before your sovereign uh, entity to come down upon this magnificent manifestation. Come on, man. Just God. <laughs> Amen. This is what I need. And I'm coming to you humbly because I confess, I forgive, I'm having faith, I don't doubt and I believe it because you're my father. And nothing you tell me is a lie. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. This is the problem with most folks. James chapter 4. When they pray. I hope I'm, I hope I'm helping somebody. James chapter 4. And watch this. Uh, four, verse three, and it says here, James four, verse three says, "You ask that word ask again means pray. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss. That word amiss means badly. You are asking according to your will and not his. <coughs> Excuse me. You're asking badly. Well, how am I asking badly? Because you didn't do." You didn't do what was required of you to get the presence of God in prayer. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe it. You were full of doubt. And you haven't forgiven nobody, much less confess your sin. Amen? So that's why he says here, 
Oh, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. They don't like me now, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> because you're consuming it upon your lust when you pray. God knows you're lusting. Oh, I want a car, Lord. Oh, Lord, give me a big house, Lord. All these stupid, watch this. Go to, um, what, go, uh, which way I want to go now? Watch this. I'm trying to prove it along the way, and I hope I am. Go to 1 John, right behind that. 1 <coughs> John. Here's why we must seek his sovereign will. 1 John. But we've got to stop. Stop just begging folk, man. When you're in your own community, especially I'm talking to foreign people now who are Facebook Live, because a lot of them come from Pakistan, Africa, uh, uh, Asia, that I deal with, and I keep trying to teach them, stop begging. Stop asking for them. Amen? See God the same way we do. We need just as much as help as you do. Our children need to be clothed. Our children need to be fed. Oh, we need homes. You know, we got a drug plight that's out this world. But I also tell them this. The homeless people in America are richer than they are in their own country. Homeless people got cell phones. They can go get food stamps. Amen. <laughs> They on the street because they want to be, amen? You know, that's the difference when you see the homeless in other countries versus America. No homeless people want to be out there because they have an addiction. They have, they have a demon that's feeding them more than the word of God that's feeding them, amen? Uh, what did I say? First John, First John chapter 5. Now watch this. This is what God tells us to do right here. First John 5, 14. First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence. This is the boldness. The word confidence means boldness. And this is the boldness that we have in him. That if we ask anything or pray anything according to our will. No. According to my mama's will. No. According to the preacher's will. No. According to the prophet's will. No. According to the apostle's will. No. It says according to his will he hears us. Amen. It's according to his will. Well, how do we find out his will? How do we find out God's sovereign will? Well, God put angels in the church, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers to teach us how to locate his will through the word of God. But a lot of them out there are teaching you how to locate their will first instead of God's will. Now, I'm going to end with this. The perfect person in prayer I ever seen in the Word of God is in the Old Testament. And yet, he was the richest man in the Bible. His name is Solomon. Solomon knew how to get the presence of God. So did his father David. I guess his father raised him up correctly. Amen? But go to 1 Kings chapter 3. Now, pay close attention to this prayer. This one, when I read it, I have been using it in my life ever since I located it and read it. First of all, I got to give honor to my own apostle because I'm not teaching you nothing he didn't teach me. You know, that he didn't teach Pastor, Pastor Patterson. Everything I'm showing you, I've learned from my apostle Jimmy Ellis out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia, okay? And I've been teaching it for years to others. There's no copyright on the Word of God. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, I like that, brother. There is no copyright on the Word of God. No, God takes your spirit from your teacher, and he puts your spirit on it to help those that need it from you. I took everything my apostle taught me and moved it over to issues and addictions. Then God gave me new revelation on what he taught me that I'll be able to minister to the people who were hurt like me. But it's basically a foundation of the same teaching. Amen? Nothing's new under God. There's no copyright. All his children are in the different parts of the body with different functions. Okay? But we should not be telling somebody, well, here's my plan. This is how you should do it. And this is my lane. And you should stay in my lane if you want to get it right. No, there are different lanes because we have different functions. Large body of body of Christ. And the head of that whole body is Jesus. But if I'm a left arm, I can't act like a right arm. Amen? But when it comes to the head, my right arm knows exactly what my left arm knows, don't it? My left foot knows exactly what my right foot knows, don't it? 
but they operate differently knowing the same thing. Oh, y'all not here. Oh, Lord have mercy. Go up. <coughs> Go to uh, 1 Kings 3. Forgive my call. 1 Kings 3. Let me get there. Pay close attention to how Solomon prayed, please. Amen. Amen. First uh, Kings chapter 3, we're going to start at verse, uh, I wouldn't like to start at 6, but go to 9. Start at 9. This is Solomon praying. Okay? This is Solomon seeking God's face about something. But pay close attention at verse 9 on, I think I'm going to go down to 14, and listen to how he prays to God. Okay? Here we go. Verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Watch this, verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing or prayed this thing. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has that nor has asked the life of thy enemies, but asked uh, but has asked for thyself understanding and discerned judgment. Oh my God. Oh my God. Watch this, verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Look, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And watch this, verse 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked for. Woo! Both riches and honor. Oh, y'all have got blown that something to holler about. Both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lift in your days. Look at that. See, Solomon didn't say, give me a house and a car, Lord. He said, give me wisdom to discern and help thy people. Give me wisdom to help the people in my congregation. Give me wisdom to help the people in my community. Give me wisdom to help the people around the world. And if you're sending me, I'm going to go. If you're sending me, I know you're going to provide. If you're sending me, I know there's no doubt about it. You're in it. You're in it. Just, give, just go walk with me, Father. You carry me and I'll go. I'll go. Amen. But we've been praying wrong. When God hears how you pray, and you're seeking what he wants you to seek diligently for, he will give you the riches. He will give you the honor. He will give you whatever you, because he knows you're wise enough to handle it. And it's not, it's not consumed upon your own lust. So I say, we need to start praying and listening more for the answer. We need to start praying and listening more for his sovereign will and what he wants out of our life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope y'all got something out of that. I, I t that was going to be my little 25 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I could go on and on. Amen. But, the, but, but I'm getting congested and I just thank you. So, Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that this word touch someone. I pray that this word went in their hearts and in their bodies and in their souls and not only give them a spiritual growth, but also give them a soul growth, Lord. Because we know the spirit battles with the soul sometimes because we're fleshly. We're in a generation that's me and me, me too, me only me generation. But Father, we know that you cover everything and it's only about you. It's always about you and only you. So I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And I give you all the glory in everything I do and everything I say. And help us along the way, Father, to seek your sovereign will and to seek your trust, that we may trust in you more and that we will seek you in everything that we do to help not only ourselves, 
but to help others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Well, Pastor, you got something you need to say, sir? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen.